Welcome back to Behind the Bolt. It is now time for the Fuddruckers one-on-one. -on -one. And because it's the bye week, we've got a guy who's got a little extra time on his hand. Head coach Mike McCoy. Coach, how's bye week been? Well, we've been doing a little self-scout. We've been in the office uh, for a couple days here, so I'm looking forward uh, the next couple days to spend some time. It's my daughter's 17th birthday today, so uh, wow. we're going to celebrate that tonight. So Liv is 17, and then happy we'll birthday, Liv! Have. Well, yeah, happy birthday, Liv. Love you. What do you have planned? Uh, it's up to her. We had plans. Free it kind of changed last night of where we're going to go to dinner, so we're going to kind of wait and see. Until uh, she gives me the phone call later on the day about where we're going. And what's that self scouting all about? Looking at tendencies. What do you do in certain areas? Yeah, we're really looking at you know in all three phases, um, and we have a good idea. You know, you've been doing it all year long, but really going back now that you have all this free time to sit down and say, you know, watching every single play in the red area. Um, you know, in each phase, kind of saying here's some things we need to work on. So, uh, you know, each side of the ball is a little bit different. What we need to work on, and just give the players a couple things when they come back next Monday, off a well-deserved break, um, and go on. Okay, so you talk about that break a little bit. League mandates, four days off. You gave the guys six. What went into that decision? Well, I think with where we were in the season, um, the health of our football team, the way these players have worked, um, I thought they deserved the break. Um, going into it, get away, and really just kind of recharge for, you know, getting started again against Houston. Were they excited about it? Well, you know, coming off the loss, they weren't too excited Monday. Right. Uh, coming in the meeting, um, they knew they were going to have Wednesday off. I had told them that um, a couple weeks ago that we were going to have the Wednesday off. They deserved that, and they earned that. And then this past week, I didn't tell them what we were going to do uh, Monday and Tuesday. But then after the game, I said, we're going to come in Monday. And I kind of explained to them, but they were bummed out about losing to Miami more than anything else. They were worried about the extra day. Right, 17 guys on injured reserve, six games left to go in the year. Do you ever allow yourself a moment to say, where would we be if we had our full armament? You know, you, you really can't worry about that. You know, in this game, you've got to go Sunday to Sunday, as you know. You, you just play. You keep on fighting your tails off. Uh, but I'll say this. I think that the players and coaches have done a phenomenal job making adjustments from week to week. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the guys are out. Um, but it gives another, a number of other players opportunities. You know, bringing someone like Corey Toomer in to come and play for us, who we get from the Raiders, and the way he's played has been outstanding. The way the receivers have played, um, you know, with Keenan and Steve going down, you know, Jeff Cumberland going down early. Um, you know, Danny Woodhead. I mean, the list goes on and on. Right. But that's one thing I'm really pleased with, the way the coaches have made adjustments, the way some younger players have stepped up, and, and that's what it's all about, making the most of your opportunities as a player. Do you think Melvin Gordon would have been, he would have blossomed into the player that he's becoming had he not had that opportunity to have so many touches? Well, the great thing about what Melvin's done is he's really accepted his increased role. You know, Danny and him were split in time. You know, and everyone talked about, you know, Mel should get more touches, this and that. Well, then all of a sudden Danny goes down, you know, and Brandon had gone down in the preseason. Right. So Melvin, you know, took it upon himself to say, okay, I've got to master the protections. Not that he didn't know it, but he said, I've got to do a better job with it. I've got to know, understand every little detail, the way Phillip plays the game, and he changes protection at the line of scrimmage, changes the mic point, you know, a recall here and there at the very last second and just seeing it and anticipating it. And then really in the passing game too, some of the plays that he's made – uh, in space have been phenomenal. So I'm just really happy, not just the way, we all knew we could run the football this way, but we've been talking about all 11 guys doing their job better, and then Mel was going to play better. And that's, uh, that's really what it's come down to in the run game this year, all 11 guys doing their job better. You talked about bringing, doing the self-scout, and when the guys come back in, giving them something to clean up. What's the most imperative part that the guys come back and get corrected? Heading into this last stretch. Well, the one thing I talked to the players about before they went on the break is really think about it yourself first. You know, and the coaches will talk to you about some things, but really look at yourself first and say, okay, what can I do better? So each individual needs to look at themselves first. But, you know, I think as a team, you know, if you look at offensively, defensively, our red area production can be better. You know, the number, the percentage of teams scoring in the red area against our defense is too high. Yep. Offensively, we're only scoring touchdowns 50% of the time. We are going up and down the field offensively. You talk about these close games and these games we aren't winning. What if we score 75% touchdowns instead of settling for field goals? What happens to these games? You know, I think if you look at the way some good things, you know, the way we're running the football from time, it needs to be more consistent, though. Right. You look at the way Melvin's running the football. Um, our defense has done a great job of stopping the run. And then I think, you know, at the third down, you always look at at the end of every year, if you've only would have had one or two more stops here and there, how can things happen? And then the most importantly is finishing games. 
We've got to go back and look at each situation and say, this is why we didn't finish a game. This is you know, how we didn't win the game. This is what we have to learn from, and this is what we have to do better moving forward when we're put in that situation some other time down the road. 22 turnovers so far this year. It leads the league. I didn't mention that. That's a great thing to mention. Offensively, that is something we have to eliminate is turnovers. How do you stop that? Well, there's different reasons for each one, um, whether it's in the kicking game, making a better decision, um, you know, doing a better job, you know, with an on-sign situation, um, you know, whether it's um, a fumble, you know, every fumble is different, you know, but you got to tuck it away. You talk, that's something you talk about from the very first day in the offseason is ball security. So whether it's a fumble against Oakland, the first drive of the game, whether it's the New Orleans situation, I mean, unfortunately, we just dropped one of the balls and just put the ball on the ground. Um, you know, Phillip Rivers is going to throw an interception. That's going to happen. But we got to eliminate, you know, some of the ones that we can. You know, there's some good players out there. They're going to make some plays. Um, unfortunately, we've had too many interceptions this year also. But the other side of that is the way the defense has created turnovers, which is the opposite side of it. So that's something I'm very pleased with, the way the defense has created turnovers. All right, why will being critical? One of your biggest critics is probably your son, Luke, Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Got extra time on the bye week. What's his biggest critique of dad? And then what does he want the team to get corrected? Well, he wants to just win. He's, you know, he knows how hard um, that we work. Yeah. He, he just he loves coming down the sideline after the games when we win. So he just says, Dad, you got to win. you got to win more often so that I come down there every game. There's nothing like I mean, that's one of the greatest feelings in the world coming down there. Um, but I'm not going to lie. In the car ride home at times, he'll ask a question or two and – the great thing is now that he's getting older, he understands the game, so there aren't as many questions. You know, he might have a comment or two, but, uh, you know, he's my biggest supporter, along with Kelly and Liv. You know, they, all they want us to do is be successful right. uh, and win games here. It's such a great place, uh, and the players work so hard, uh, but we've had some tough losses, so it's just as tough on them too. Got a young group of players. It's this young core that's kind of having this uprising here that you're building, and it's been fun to watch these guys who do you see as one guy that could take the leadership reins? Well, one guy that's been very impressive is Jatavis. What he's done at an early stage in his career as a rookie, and when he got inserted into the defense, the way he played, and then, you know, coming off the field all the time, you see him there at the bottom of the tunnel after every game, looking to shake every player's hand, come up the tunnel. Um, what he has said at times on the sideline or in the huddle, and I don't hear all these things, but what players have said or coaches tell me after the games, the leadership role he's taken on as a rookie is amazing. And just, you know, unfortunately, he had a little setback with his injury. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting him back out in the field. But really, I'm really happy with the entire rookie class, all the way from the first pick to the college free agent guys that we have here. They've done an outstanding job as younger players. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thank you, bud. Appreciate Good it. Thank you. It was you. fun. Thank you. Yes, thank you.